Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again. Uh, I've got a little Infinite Lagrange video, uh, it's a bit more of a test because obviously new PC's all set up, so I'm just making sure my audio and everything's all working, so do leave comments down below if you think some changes need to happen, because uh, I don't have any of those settings anymore, this is like completely, almost a new PC basically, the only thing old in it is my RTX uh, 2080. Anyway, thank you guys for your patience. Hope you look, uh, well, hope you enjoy the video and I look forward to doing a lot more recordings now. I've got much better setup. Um, I've got a little bit more time, although I am on holiday in a bit, but I will have a load of recording done for that. So you are not going to lose any videos uh, for now. Well, unless my CPU just randomly explodes again. So thank you guys. Hope you enjoy the video and over to future me. So this one's a bit of a test recording, but it's also in one of the patch notes uh, that came out yesterday. And it's quite interesting patch notes, so I definitely did want to go through it. So I'm going to. So, to provide you better gameplay experience, Infinite Lagrange will undergo server maintenance for approximately an hour and a half uh, yesterday. During this time, the game will be unavailable. We kindly ask for your patience and understanding during maintenance. So one, adjustments of the weapon attack priority of some ships. Now this is partly the reason why I wanted to talk about this because it's more um, fighter buffs, more or less. Actually, the, I think there are all fighters here. Uh, there's no interceptors or uh, bombers here. But adjust the attack priority of some airborne combat cannons to prioritize fighters, corvettes, destroyers, frigates from prioritizing fighters, destroyers, frigates. Weapons involved are the SC-002 Quantum Scouts, the Sandrakes Cannons, the uh, Balancer Andersons Cannon, uh, the Vetus A-021 Heavy Attacker, the Spores Weapons, and the Rationale A-101, also the Jambaya, and the Mistral. So, developer common is an, uh, an airborne combat cannon is usually used in aircraft-to-aircraft -aircraft battles. After the adjustments, the attack priority of the related weapons will be more in line with their roles. So they are pushing these to be more fighters and what they should be doing, as before they were quite often ignoring the fighters, attacking destroyers, frigates. Hopefully this changes them into more aerial combat, like they, they're suggesting here. Um, so yeah, really good. One of the other reasons I wanted to uh, comment on this one is because um, I don't know when it was, because I scrolled through in my time where I was waiting for components to turn on, but I couldn't record and stuff. I threw a load of balance notes, and I couldn't find when they changed the Balancer Andersons and the SC002's um, debuff ability. So, and I double checked it because I still got the old recording of the Balancer and the SC002 where I look at uh, the, the debuff and the debuffs to hit rate on enemy ships. And I don't know when it happened, but they changed it. It's now dodge rate, debuffs dodge rate. This does leave them still in a relatively situational uh, circumstance as if you are coming up against a lot of Cruises, although yes, the IO, the Connemara, etc., do have like increased dodge rates and stuff like that. But genuinely, cruisers, battle cruisers, carriers don't have much dodge rate against that type of ship. It's not particularly good. Although you could say uh, against carriers, it is good because it could uh, decrease the dodge rate on uh, fighters and corvettes, etc., which is very good. But yeah, so the big damage dealers, the cruisers, the uh, battle cruisers, you're not going to see much uh, bonus damage coming from the Balancer Andersons for their debuff, but you will see some. They do have a, a small amount of dodge rate. But against the high DPM destroyer frigate fleet, you may see starting to pop up recently. Uh, they're going to do very, very well because a lot of those will have a good baseline dodge rate and few of them 
have increased dodge rate. Carillions uh, have increased dodge rate. The Eris has increased dodge rate, for examples. And hitting those with a dodge rate debuff is going to hit them very, very hard as they do genuinely rely on that for their ability to tank. So this is a bit of the uh, answer to those Carillion fleets uh, that you may see or may know where they don't seem to ever die because they keep getting, well, they keep missing or your ships keep missing. So um, they are definitely ranked higher than I originally uh, put them. I believe I put them in D, but that was more of a, a situational uh, stance anyway. And with this patch as well, and I believe there's a patch coming out on the 17th that looks quite interesting, and I'll be going through that on the 17th uh, with you guys um, as well, and that's going to change a load of stuff. But with that, I probably rank these between A and B, with the balancer in A, the low end of A, and the SC02 in the low end of B, and that's due to the fact that the balancer still got... They both do the exact same thing, but the balancer has the better weapon system as well, so it makes more sense for the balancer to be slightly ahead of the SC002. Um, as for all the other ones, this is just a really nice little buff. There wasn't much attacking Corvettes for some reason, and this kind of fixes this. And if it works as uh, I believe they intend it to, uh, you're going to see some Corvettes just getting blown up to pieces because some of these uh, fighters will decimate Corvettes quite nicely, and it may drop the viability of just running full Corvette fleets, which I know some people do. For example, the T800 is just ridiculous. It's got AA. It's got anti-ship it's energy based weapons and you can run 15 of them for some reason and they do absolutely just melt everything and the fact that they do you know multiple roles really really powerful so this kind of change may put those into check which is really really good bringing more balance within the game Next up, we've got the adjustment to the attack priority of some torpedo launching weapons. Uh, they say some, it's only one. It's the winged hussar on the uh, integrated missile destroyer variant uh, to prioritize frigates and destroyers from prioritizing aircraft. This makes more sense to me because the torpedoes don't have great tracking uh, or anything like that. So trying to hit frigate uh, fighters with... Um, Torps, yeah, it didn't work out too well. So this hitting frigates and destroyers now got a much more better chance of hitting uh, the fighter, uh, the frigates and destroyers, and that's going to be really, really good. And its weapon system's actually not too bad if you take into account the prioritization of the frigates and destroyers because it has enough damage to punch through them. Uh, with the exception of the Aldebra having ridiculous armor, most are quite low armored. Yeah, they have good dodge rates on some of them, but most of the time this is going to do quite well now, so it'd be interesting to test this out because it may be a pretty viable replacement in the early game uh, if you want to run the quad torpedoes on the Hussar. We then have optimized description of enhancement options for some ship weapons and their combat performance has been unchanged. Uh, this is just changing the text. The hangar armor enhancement, for example, was the armor buff for uh, fighters and whatever was docked to it. And the navigational computer enhancement, I believe, was uh, increased dodge rates and stuff like that. So they, they haven't changed, it's just they've reworded them so they reflect what they do better. Optimize the way to remove reinforcing ships from the fleets that received reinforcements after returning to the base. Ships serving as reinforcements will be removed from the reinforced fleet upon returning to the base so that the latter can be restored to its initial fleet lineup. This is the biggest quality of life change, potentially for me personally, ever. I run fleets with the, you know, strict idea that the ST-59 is far too slow to go into a fleet, and I love my ST-59 because it's got tons of modules on it, so it does conceivably better than pretty much all of my other um, battle cruisers. So I always use them in reinforcement fleets, and when I forget to remove said reinforcement fleet from the main fleet and they get back to base because I, you know, pulled them back. I have to put every single ship back into its fleet and the proper place. 
and it's the most annoying thing in the world. This is going to save me hours a week um, when I forget to remove the reinforcement fleet early. So yeah, this is a fantastic change and highly probably underrated, but it's amazing. <laughs> it's my favorite change so far. Four. Optimize the info display of the ship's survivability in the battle report. I'm not quite sure what that means, but we'll uh, have to che check it. Uh, so the info display of the ship's survivability in the battle report. I'm guessing maybe they've added, hopefully, maybe armor mitigation or something. It'd be really good to see what damage the armor's mitigated or something like that. So you get a, you know, you can see what kind of survivability you're getting when you're adding that two extra armor or four extra armor or if you should go more into the HP and stuff like that. Added the view from the UAVs for Xeno Stinger in the fleet sailing scenario. Uh, this is quite cool. You can, I'm guessing you can go watch your UAVs go blow stuff up if, as long as it's on the Xeno Stinger. Unfortunately, I mean, you can run Xeno Stingers well into the late game, but they are very, very squidgy and they just seem to drop like flies later on, which is a shame because they bring significant DPM being energy weapons on those UAVs and those UAVs being untargetable. So, definitely pretty cool. We can go watch the UAVs flying about. Uh, we've also got adjusted the reward for completing some quests issued by Space Cities, which is fine. I don't really do quests after mid-game. I don't find them particularly useful. Uh, I do pick up the ones that they give to you in the base, where it's like, you know, give them UAC, they give you something. I do those ones, but I don't really follow the quests all that much um, anymore. I don't find the rewards worthwhile in my opinion um new features and adjustments for some star systems adjusted the difficulty of defeating city defense fleets in some star systems star systems involve target star systems of the node recovery agreement and those of the tragic crystal collection agreement this is interesting because i don't know they don't tell you if they've made it harder or easier the tragic I know for a fact have some pretty nasty fleets and they do rip you apart quite nicely the difficulty could be upped slightly a little bit more to make it even better uh, in my opinion having more cha challenges uh, against city defenses is well it's just good i generally think it is because it just you know it means that instead of one person taking a level two out you, you know you might have to bring that second person in now even if you've got your overpowered fleet so yeah, no, I, I quite enjoy it. Also added a new district, the Pioneers Industrial Park for the city Antontis in the hub star system. Uh, so yeah, another place to go buy your offices for your union. Uh, we've also got optimized the map of the city Antontis in the hub star system and optimize the animation effects when entering a new star system after signing the Trojite Crystal Collection Agreement and during the star system development rating. This is quite cool because I noticed on my phone, I like the, it was completely fine. Like the, the video would run perfectly well. And uh, on my PC, it did not, which is probably because the CPU was dying. But uh, yeah, maybe it's okay now after test. Um, five, optimize the save mode of the system mail during star system relocation. Uh, this is quite interesting because if you went into a new star system, you'd lost all your mails. So I don't know if this is literally only the system mail that you're going to be able to keep, or if you're going to be able to keep the other mails that are sent to you, you know, via union, via friends, and that sort of stuff. The bug fixes I won't go through. There wasn't anything really amazing here. Um, so I'm going to ignore it for now. There are some interesting ones, but nothing too much. You can go read those yourself, either on their website. If you go up to news, uh, you'll see all the update announcements and you can find this patch notes. You can also find it on their Discord and you can also find it over on my Discord and link is in the description for my Discord. So definitely go check that out. These are updated as soon as they release on my Discord so you can find the latest patch notes as and when they release. So yeah, quite nice changes. We've got buffs to more fighters, meaning that they should attack other fighters and Corvettes a little bit better. And yeah, you know, the torpedoes and the wing to SAR, something that the integrated missile destroyer 
the winged SR, that variant, was next to useless. Uh, I did test it out a few times and I couldn't get it to do barely anything. Hopefully now with this change of prioritizing uh, to f uh, frigates and destroyers, we'll get more damage out of it, which would be quite nice. And yeah, overall pretty good buffs. Nothing nerfed really, which is interesting. I was kind of expecting some nerfs, but uh, we'll see. It looks like they're just trying to power creep the buffs up over nerfing things, which in my opinion is a good way of doing things. Uh, it keeps, you know, people from going, ah, oh, my ship's really, really good and broken to, you know, when they get nerfed, oh, I'm never going to play this game again, because, you know, there's always those people within these games, to... Well, now your ship hasn't changed, but everything around you has changed, and you're going to have to just deal with it, which is quite cool. Anyway, thank you guys for being patient and, and waiting for me to get back set up and stuff like that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.